this video I'm going to talk about acute lymphoid leu leukemia also known as ALL and um, ALL is uh, basically a condition when the normal blood cells uh, undergo a malignant transformation um, into um, cells that are essentially unable to mature into blood cells so so when you have this malignant transformation there becomes uh, a very very large number of cells that are undifferentiated and essentially what that means is that they have not been able to mature into the blood cells that you normally want so what red blood cells are those? Well, you're talking about red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So before we get into ALL, let's talk a little bit about blood. Blood essentially has cells, and then you have the plasma part of it. So the cells are also known as formed elements. And then the cells, basically, you have quite a few, but you can break them into three categories, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Now, we all know that uh, the red blood cells are the ones that carry oxygen, and um, when somebody is anemic, it's referring to um, a low red blood cell count. White blood cells, we all know, are the ones that fight infection and, and um, help us when we uh, acquire some sort of bacterial infection or other type of infection. And platelets are the cells that form blood clots and prevent us from bleeding to death essentially when these cells are not produced properly you will get problems of anemia you will get problems of infection and you'll get problems associated with bleeding so that's uh, very important to understand um, so what happens when the when the normal uh, stem cells the normal blood stem cells also known as hematopoietic cells uh, undergo this malignant transformation and become essentially blasts. Now, what on earth is a blast? It's just a term to. Uh, it just it's a term used to describe precursor cells, or that that are un, unable to um, to mature further uh, into blood cells. So normally, you know, if the person didn't have leukemia these blood stem cells would mature into red blood cells like we talked about white blood cells and platelets if everything was healthy but in uh, leukemia because you have this malignant transformation that this is not able to happen so you get these blasts which are essentially cells that are unable to mature into proper blood cells so that's the first problem the second problem is that what happens is that the uh, the proliferation of these uh, abnormal cells can also uh, replace the normal bone marrow um, uh, with these um, uh, abnormal cells and another thing that can happen is that certain organs can also be infiltrated by um, these uh, abnormal cells and that can cause those organs to enlarge in particular those organs are liver the spleen and the lymph nodes so those of you uh, who are familiar with the terminology if the liver is enlarged that's hepatomegaly if the spleen is enlarged that's splenomegaly and if the lymph nodes are enlarged that's lymphadenopathy so we'll get into that just wanted to give you a, a key uh, understanding of um, blood and blood cells before I get into the symptoms so we have ALL that's what we're gonna talk about today before I jump right into the symptoms I just want to talk that talk about the fact that this is the most common pediatric cancer interestingly most common pediatric cancer and the average or peak incidence is between ages uh, 2 to 5 with 4 age four being the most common uh, on licensing exams and in, in the real world as well 
Okay, so now let's let's talk a little bit about symptoms. Well, instead of just memorizing all the symptoms, think about what happens, right? You have uh, your normal cells that are not able to uh, differentiate into um, red blood cells, uh, white blood cells, or platelets. So if you don't get red blood cells, you have a situation of anemia. And if you don't get white blood cells, because white blood cells are involved in uh, fighting infection, you get infections. And if you don't get platelets, you get bleeding. And all the symptoms that are involved in ALL stem from these three um, deficiencies. So instead of memorizing it, let's talk about it in a way that it makes sense. So if you're anemic, the first one, what type of symptoms would you have? Well, just think about if someone's anemic, um, they would uh, essentially be pale, they would be fatigued, easy bruising, and then probably even have some shortness of breath. Infections. Well, infections uh, can happen because of a wide variety of bacterial organisms uh, and other types of organisms as well. But that, one of the most common uh, symptoms uh, that would probably occur is a fever. And then finally, what are the symptoms if somebody has low platelet counts because those platelets haven't been developed? Well, bleeding, of course, is, is a symptom. But more specific um, symptoms or signs on physical exam include petechiae. Other things that can happen is a bloody nose, also known as epistaxis. And then um, bleeding, bleeding gums as well. So instead of memorizing all this, just think about the key cells that have not been produced because of this unfortunate malignant transformation of the blood stem cells, and uh, you'll understand what, why these symptoms are occurring. The next thing I wanted to mention is I touched on this a little bit earlier is that the the cells can also infiltrate various organs and that can result in, in the enlargement uh, hepatomegaly when the cells infiltrate the liver and make the liver enlarged and then the spleen is another one so splenomegaly and then of course the lymph nodes and that would result in lymphadenopathy Lympha Denopathy. Simply, simply uh, these terms. Um, if, if you're a beginner, it just simply means enlargement of those organs. So we talked a little bit about the symptoms. So the child comes in with all these symptoms. What what would be some of the initial tests you would do as a diagnostic workup? Well, the most common one, of course, is a CBC, also known as a complete blood count. And the CBC will tell you the red blood cell count, it will tell you the white blood cell count, and it will tell you the platelet count. And of course, you would expect that these would all be low. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. The next test you would do is a peripheral smear. It's very important because you will see, uh, you can check this on the web for pictures of a peripheral blood smear, and they kind of look like pictures of blood cells but what you're really looking for are blasts remember we talked about those blasts blasts are basically the precursor cells that are unable to uh, mature into uh, proper blood cells you'll see these blasts on the peripheral smear the final one you can also do a bone marrow um, exam to uh, check for those blasts because those blasts will be in the bo bone marrow as well and then there's also very specific tests that they do called cytogenetics I won't get too, into too much detail about that but I just wanted to mention that real quick more specific tests to diagnose leukemia so how do you treat leukemia well the uh, the treatment is actually an entire lecture in itself but I'll just touch on it briefly. What I really wanted to touch on is the supportive care rather than the chemo. The chemotherapy, of course, there's very specific chemotherapy uh, agents, uh, drugs that are used to treat leukemia. 
but the supportive care is what I really wanted to um, touch base on. In particular, it, it kind of helps to understand. Um, instead of memorizing the supportive care, I think it's very easy or, or much more better to uh, to understand what the supportive care does. Well, think about what's actually happening, and then uh, platelets are low, right? Platelets. Well, if the red blood cells are low, the person is anemic. So you treat that by giving transfusions, blood transfusions. Um, you can also, uh, in, in addition to giving uh, blood tra uh, red blood cell transfusions, you can also uh, give uh, platelet transfusions. So it's not just red blood cells, but it's also platelets. And you can also give uh, granulocytes, uh, which is uh, a type of white blood cell, uh, in in the transfusions as well, granulocyte transfusions, granulocyte transfusions. So the transfusions are essentially a direct replacement of what the, was not produced because of the leukemia. The next part uh, of the supportive care, I can kind of put it up here, is antibiotics or antimicrobial agents. So why are you giving that? Well, recall, if you have a low blood, white blood cell count, you're prone to infections. So this is to treat the infections. And of course, it, it depends what infection the person has. And the final thing I wanted to mention in terms of supportive care is adequate hydration. And the reason for that is because when the uh, leukemic cells lyse, lysis of these leukemic cells, they actually uh, release a, a, a large uh, uh, quantities of uh, electrolytes such as potassium um, and other um, uh, phosphate. And the hydration uh, allows um, or prevents rather uh, electrolyte imbalances such as hyperkalemia or hyperphosphatemia. So hydration to prevent electrolyte imbalances. So I hope that makes sense. Important things to understand rather than memorize because if you memorize it won't make any sense whatsoever. Just want to finish off with a quick uh, vignette. So you have a five-year-old boy, one month history of fevers and lassitude uh, which is uh, sort of like feeling weak, lethargy, weakness. It's found to have a severe anemia, so decreased red blood cells, moderate th thrombocytopenia, which is decreased platelets, and a white blood cell count of 12,000. A bone marrow biopsy would reveal. Well, just want to touch on this briefly. What is a normal white blood cell count? It's about 4,500 to 10,000, I think. Well, if the person, if the child has a fever, that's signaling that he has an infection. And if the child has an infection, you'd think that the white blood cell count would be quite high. In any type of infection, uh, you know, the, the white blood cell count becomes high. But in this case, the white blood cell count isn't really that high. So it's actually counterintuitive. Well, the reason the white blood cell count is not that high is because he has leukemia. His uh, blood stem cells are not able to mature into white blood cells um, the way they would if he was healthy. So what you would probably expect a very very high white blood cell count and maybe 18,000 or more is not. Um, he does not have the classic marked elevation of white blood cells. So he has a he doesn't have a very high elevation of white blood cells he has severe anemia, he has a low platelet count and he's weak he has all the classic symptoms of leukemia. And because of his age um, and uh, the uh, incidence involved in uh, this type of leukemia, na namely ALL, the most uh, appropriate answer for this would be A.